Hey guys, it's Max. Welcome back to the Daily Cover Caller. Let's see what we got going on on these high yield funds today. All right, we'll start over here with Mr. Vix and see if it's still elevated. And by elevated, I mean that the left side up here, which is the near month, August, September, this is the future price of the, all the months into the future. Anyway, when it's elevated, it means when the near month is, is elevated. So if it slopes down and to the right away, when you're looking at it, that's uh, that's danger zone. That means look out below. Now, the market's going up right now, but uh, and that's good. The market's recovering a little bit right now. This The good news about this, if we look at the previous day's VIX term structure, today's is less uh, sloped less severely sloped so maybe someday soon we'll get back to a normal term structure and a normal term structure goes goes up and out all right so let's look at they didn't have the prices on defiance they didn't have the daily trades up and i had to go to the website and, and figure and and just take their i had to kind of reconstruct the profit boxes but in any event they're not having any problems today. Full profit on triple QI. All Full profit on JEPY. Full profit on IWMY. Nice profit on IWMY. All right, uh, let's go to USOY. Well, let's just check USO. How about that? <laughs> All right, USO, they had their option expire yesterday. And I, I, I like I told you, I, I did, uh, they did not have intraday trades available today, which I, it's ridiculous when they don't have that. Um, it happened once last month too. Look, I'll click on USOI just to prove it to you. And then we'll go. Then I'll click on intraday trades. It'll come up. I'll click on it there. And then I'll click on it there. And then it opens up. But see these dates right here is 8, 7, 8, 7, 8, 7. So it's yesterday's trades up still. I've checked plenty of times. Anyway, so what I do is we just look here and see what they have. We, but this doesn't give us the exact trade price. So I kind of have to guess. This just gives us the closing price. But they sold the 75 put that expires on the 9th, which is tomorrow, Friday. And it closed at a dollar two. They probably got more like a dollar twenty for it. This is always where I get messed up. But uh, in any event, so really the the good thing about selling the seventy five is it's the same strike as last week. So I wouldn't even have to draw. We could just draw the profit box, just kind of extend the profit box. And I don't know exactly how much premium they got, so I'll just make the box the same size as last week. But actually, last week's had one more day in it, just because of the way the expiration cycles fell and volatility's come down a little bit. So I'm just going to estimate that the profit box is a little smaller. That'll be close enough. Okay, so now let's get on from here. I was looking through the SEC last night. They're coming out with some new funds. I'm sure you guys have heard about these. The um, some new yield max high yield single name funds. BABA is their high yield fund is called BABO, and I believe it just came out the other day, or it's just it's out. But now these other ones I don't believe are out yet. Um, they have some cool names for some of these, like Hood, which is Robin Hood, is going to be Huey H O O Y. So anyway. Um, the only thing that I wanted to say about these is they released a perspective a prospectus and um, they've changed the prospectus where they could do call spreads even on these single name funds. 
And that'll be huge because single names can really go up fast. Call spreads partially uncapped the upside. To me, the capped upside is, is, is the major problem with covered call strategies and covered call ETFs. So this, to me, solves a major problem. We'll see how they apply it and everything, but, but I like what I see in the SEC filings lately. All right, so the spreadsheet is not up to date, unfortunately. I'm sorry. All right, we have earnings. Well, let's do this, though. Let's look at the chart a little bit more. Let's look at Tesla. We'll look at Tesla and crash. I did put crashes trade on here. Actually, the Tesla and crash Paris trade is going just fine today. They're right between the profit boxes. I mean, they sold off earlier in the week, but they've stabilized since, kind of like the market. We'll see if it stays that way. Um, so what we can do, though, let's look at the Tesla crash delta neutral trade. I did fix this one. This one is up to date and updating live. So look at this. Uh, well, surely I think the <laughs> when I say it's up to date and updating live, then, uh, then I realize it's not. I mean, it, it's supposed to be, but there's some kind of error because it paid the I think because the uh, it's not even worth don't even worry about it. Uh, anyway, gosh darn it! Is there's no what it's saying is it's saying the pair's up seven point five six percent today, and there's just no way that's not even possible. And I worked on this for like an hour last night uh, trying to make this work. I don't see what's the matter with it. Uh, so it's saying the daily change. Yeah, it's because the dividend was paid yesterday, and I can't figure out how to make it factor the dividend in. That's all it was. It did. It needs to. It, we aren't really up five dollars and twenty one cents today. It, it, I thought it zeroed that out. I don't understand why it doesn't. All right. Well, uh, I don't need what to say about this. Last time it worked, the pair was down like eight percent or something. So now it's showing the pairs about even. That's not true. Um, the pairs down about seven or eight percent, which is which is fine. It's doing well, and the yield on cost is twenty percent. It did pay a dividend yesterday. It paid eighty four cents on one leg and ninety six cents on the other leg, and that's the reason it, it it needs to factor the dividend out of the daily change formula. Gosh darn it! I should have caught that. Um, anyway. I guess the good news is it works every other day of the month because that this only happens one day of the month, but it messes up the whole chart. Uh, I need to fix it. I need to fix it. All right. Well, so we have earnings. Uh, big one is after the close today would be, I don't know, Gilead. <laughs> Maybe. Looks like the big ones are my trade desk. T, I think that's TTD. Yeah, the, the trade desk. Take two interactive. Looks like the big ones are behind us for this week. Let's see who we have on deck for next week. Well, not a whole lot. It looks like it's kind of slowing down. Cisco, Walmart, John Deere. JD, Applied Materials, and Berkshire Hathaway. All right, Home Depot. All right, so um, I was asked to do a hedge trade. Today would be, let's, let's talk about the market. So the market's bouncing right now. Let's look at... Let's look at VIX. Let's look at volatility. All right, volatility is inverse. So when it's going down, it's good for the market. So a, a bullish signal would be when it's underneath its Bollinger Bands and trending down, it's, which it isn't really doing now. It's kind of between its Bollinger Bands. It tried to do that earlier in the day. It got underneath the Bollinger Bands and started trending down and then kind of uh, slipped back inside of them. This orange line is the 200-day moving average. But any event, when it gets under both of them, that's usually a pretty strong sign, at least in this time frame. This is the 30-minute time frame that a rally may be kicking off. 
but uh, it looks like the rally kind of stalled off, stalled out here. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Now let's look at the. When I say the rally stalled out, this is the SPX, and it was just blowing up, and it's stalled out for now. I wouldn't be surprised if it turns around and goes down. I still think that the kind of the bigger momentum, the bigger time frame trade is down and is, you know, is down. So let's look at one thing. I wanted to, I made some targets. So these are on the queues on the NASDAQ. And then I want to talk about that hedge trade that I was, uh, that I was asked to, I was asked to help somebody on. Okay, these are the open gaps. I went back and I got all the open gaps. There's a ton of them because we've been, you know, on a tremendous face ripper. We we closed these two gaps right here, the, but the big one, the big next one is down here at 410. Then after that, 370. These go way back. Um, this was a huge one. This 371 was a gigantic one that, where the market just blasted off. Um, I mean, it goes back to when is that, uh, November of 23. That's when this thing, that's, that's the, that's what started this. That's what kicked this whole bull run off. Okay. So in any event, uh, if it does slip, like I say, and if the momentum, the bigger time frame takes over and we go down and look for a next low, it'll probably be somewhere in this area. It'll, it'll maybe want to go down and retest these lows and the, 410 to 415 area, or maybe right around here, the 409, 405, right around this open gap. And God forbid, if it gets under that, it could get worse. This line right here that I drew last night, that purple line, that's where a bear market starts. A bear market starts at a 20% decline is the way a lot of people um, define it. So I just wanted to put that on there. Now I'm going to switch to a longer time frame, and then I'm going to show the the hedge because the person's asking how to hedge a half million dollar account you know that's in nasdaq how to hedge a half million dollar nasdaq account so um that you know maybe they have tech or who knows what they have but or maybe they just own the cues i don't know but uh i was thinking maybe they just you know they have tech okay so here's the longer time frame so this is the daily time frame so the way i define a bear market is when uh you get daily closes under the 200 day moving average so we're pretty close to that but that but that's not the only way to define it there's um that's that's max's way of defining it so anyway uh i think it could get serious well before it even gets here but there's there's no steadfast rules there's sometimes it might get under the 200 day moving average for a week and then recover and it'd be fine it's not like there's anything magic about the 200 day moving average. It's not like there's anything magic about the 20% pullback level as to where our bear market starts. We're just going to keep looking at them. However, a lot of people have, have had uh, a lot of people. Uh, there's a lot of anecdotal success stories about people buying uh, retracements to the 200 day, like right here. You know, a lot of people say as long as it holds the 200 day, the bull market's good and they'll and they'll buy retracements. And not only that, or they'll allocate long as long as the market's above the 200 day moving average. OK, but then when it's under the 200 day moving average and it stays under, you know, not just goes under for a day and then pops back above when it when it's under and stays under to me, that's the bear market. So when was the last bear market? Well, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, October, November in december i forgot it lasted a whole year that was a miserable year uh we got a one-year bull market. i just forgot it last that long i thought we popped out of it by like october but we did not we did not pop out of that bull market now we could also chart the 20 percent pullback and see where it would have said so uh 40 80 points 80 so uh 17 so 317 would be right here i'll draw the line then I promise I'm going to get to this hedge trade, but I'm just not real bullish on the market. So that's why I'm showing these, these numbers and we'll, we'll keep an eye on this stuff and we'll see if I was right. All 
I don't know why this is so touchy today. It's not even that big of a deal. My gosh. What in the hell? Okay. Anyway, that's approximately the 20% mark. So uh, it got under the 200 day that time well before it got to the 20% down mark. I guess when it gets to the 20% down mark, then you're in a for sure bear market because it's also under the 200 day. So, okay. So onto this, onto this trade really fast. Um, okay. So it is a good day to do that because these, because options, when you buy options, you're buying insurance. Well, options, you're also buying volatility. You're, hey, you are, you're buying volatility. Well, options are priced on volatility. Well, if we tried to buy protection a few days ago when the market was crashing, these options would have been twice as expensive because volatility was real high past two or three days, it's come back in. So now these are somewhat more affordable. Um, the, but unfortunately they're still pretty damn expensive. Um, so this, this hedge is a half million dollar. I don't know why it's so freaking hard. What in the hell? I'm sorry. Um, all right, this this hedge is a half million dollar account, so I had to use triple Qs because even just using one Nasdaq option, it was too big. One NDX. Now the NDX would have been preferable because if you use triple Qs, this is a twenty one by nine spread. So there's these nine options down here are short. Anyway, it just these options, they aren't, you know, it, it's, they aren't uh, cash settled. You have to settle with stock. You know, they're, it's just, they're just a pain. I mean, there's, you have a chance where you could get assigned. Um, now it's not going to be a problem because you have 21 puts that are, have a, a higher strike price. It's not going to cost you any money to get assigned. You're covered, but it's, it's just kind of a pain. The, the other ones would be pro it's preferable always to use the index options if possible. The index options are really big because they're made more for institutions. So on the on the uh, index or on the so we that's another thing I was going to say. There is a there's there are options called index, and there's all well I'm sorry of course there's index, but then there's all options called XND, and they aren't super liquid, but they're smaller versions of the NDX. And the reason that's important is because they're cash settled and you can't have early assignment. There's no early assignment. So, um, but anyway, the drawback with those is lots of times they're super ill liquid. So we can, we might as well just look right here, right? I mean, you're here. So XND is the symbol. It's the NASDAQ micro index. Okay. And uh, and it is one. So max profit on this is twenty thousand dollars. All right. Max profit on this is one point eight. So what is that? It's 10 to one or is it a hundred to one? Yeah. These micros are, are one hundredth the size. Cause 1.8 million to 20,000. Yeah. They're one hundredth the size. Okay. Well, that's perfect. So that, so that could work too. The reason I didn't do the trade like that is cause look, I mean the bid ask, there's no volume, no open interest. It's just, it's shitty liquidity. So, you might want to check and see, you know, and I mean, of course we're looking at new year's Eve expirations. Maybe if you go out far enough, these are liquid. I don't know. Uh, this is the kind of stuff uh, that we can check out really easily though. They don't have a new year's Eve expiration. They just have a December 20th expiration and it still looks like it's crap. It looks like you can, yeah, it just looks like it's crap. So anyway, so that's not an alternative. Well, the good news is, is QQQ is super duper liquid. I mean, they're some of the most, so you can get filled really easy. So that spread that's on there, 
I called it, I, I called it Steve's spread or Steve's hedge. Right now it's down $372 because the market's ripping. Remember, it's a bearish position. Okay, one other thing about this. It's and it's expensive too. It costs thirty-two thousand dollars for the rest of the year. But it's a get out of jail free card for the rest of the year, no matter how far the market drops. If the market drops, the market drops hundred percent. This makes five hundred and thirty thousand. So if you have a half million dollar account and the market drops hundred percent, you need to replace half a million, right? Well, this makes a little bit more than that. Um, but if the market drops 20%, you need to replace a hundred thousand. This makes your hundred thousand. Same thing at 30% percent set 40, 50, you know, uh, you have to forego like the first, uh, 6.3%, you know, so it, it has to move at least that far before you start making any money. But then after it moves that far, then you start making money or money in a linear fashion, just like you would if you were short stock. All right. So that's a nice trade. Um, I'll post it in the comments in case anyone's interested in it. Since it's just for one person's account, you know, uh, somebody wants to put in the comment another one. I'll do a different one tomorrow. Somebody tell me what you have. You don't have to tell me that you have it, but you could say, hey, uh, do one, uh, do a $3 million account that's, uh, you know, that's uh, tech and small caps or something. And then we'll, and I'll, and I'll see if we can figure out something for it, you know, um, anyway, just use the fake name or whatever. The, the YouTube comments, it always has fake names. I don't know most of the, most of your names anyway. I mean, the regulars I do, but, but anyway, uh oh, this is bulletin. Uh, <clears throat> nah, nothing important. Okay. I'm gonna let you guys go. How's that sound? I bet you guys are happy about that. All right. Have a good one. I'll talk to you later.